large city and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Here's actress Joan Bennett. It's terrible to try to act with a dreadful cold. To feel better quickly, I take four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve nasty cold distress. Yes, tests of four leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting of all. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve aches, pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When you catch cold, try my way. Take four-way cold tablets. The fast way to relieve cold distress. Four-way, 29 and 59 cents. And now a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. To get rid of embarrassing dandruff in three minutes, change to Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch and embarrassing dandruff's gone. At the same time, Fitch can brighten hair up to 35%. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. set or offer me some coffee. Here's a pot. Help yourself. Hmm. You lived alone like this too long, Whip. You got no manners. But then I never seen a wolfer that did. Just pigs, all of you. You want some? I finished feeding. <laughs> feeding. It's like a pig. That. Must be below freezing even in the sun. Now, you didn't leave no warm ranch house just to come be sociable with a wolf or Guthrie. No, not dang likely. You got some bone to pick with me? Start picking. All right. Webb, what am I hiring you for? Clean the wolves off in your land? Right. And I see you got pelts enough. You got muskrat and bobcat, and you got badger. You got everything but wolf. I turn in a plenty of wolf skin already. You seen it? That's just what I mean. You shot a raft of wolves for you was here two months. Seemed like maybe you got most all of them around. I told you I would. Yeah, that's right. You lived up to your reputation. Best wolf on the plains. Only if you got them all, how come there's five of my best colts laying out there with their bellies ripped? You tell me that? I seen them. Yeah, I bet you did. All right, if it wasn't wolves done that, maybe you can tell me what it was. 
It was a wolf, right enough. A wolf? Be more than likely a whole pack. No. No, just one. A big one. A splayed foot. You trying to tell me one wolf done all that? He's big, Guthrie. Maybe the biggest I've seen in all my years. Well, if you've seen him, why don't you get him? Well, he ain't easy. He's big. He's smart. And that, that splayed foot, he'd been trapped before. There's other ways to take a wolf. A mean one to track, too. You don't get but a glimpse. Not enough for a sure shot. Where are you trying to tell me there's a wolf that you can't catch? Maybe. This one's white, Guthrie. White? What's that mean? Shy and say. Oh. Shy and say the white one's his big medicine spirit. Oh, dang engine talk. I mean, you're being raised by the engines 20 years. Well, you're more engine than white. Maybe. Uh, maybe you're dreaming this wolf up. Maybe that's it. What do you mean? It's almighty suspicious. You clean out every wolf but this one. And he kills might near as much as all others did. Say it out, Guthrie. All right, just one wolf. But you got to stay and hunt him till he's caught. And pocket my money and eat my grub. And for one lone wolf, it ain't a bad way to spend a cold winter, is it? You saying I let him live on purpose? I'm saying maybe there ain't no wolf. Maybe it ain't a wolf at all ripping up my colts. Man could do that, a man like you. Cold eyed, half breathing, got no feelings. You get out of my camp, Gutter. Oh, me. no, no, it ain't me. It's you that's getting out with him. Off in my land, and right now. You can't run me off, Guthrie. This here's free land. Not for no killers, it ain't. I seen your kind before. It's easy for you to kill her. It don't matter, wolf or coal. Or man. I ain't killed me one for time, Guthrie, but it won't go very hard. So you better get along now. I'm warning you, Wib. You get off of my land. Not till I finish what I come for. I'll have you run off. How? I'll send to Dodge for the marshal. You'll see. And if you stay, you'll end up dead, Wib. Somebody will. That's for sure. When acid indigestion slows you down, get relief quickly, safely, effectively. Suddenly upset fast with the modern antacid that goes everywhere with you. Who do you know about the little white tablet in the little green pocket row? Just a waiting for the moment when you need them to bring your acid indigestion under control. Tums are the little white tablets in the little green pocket row. Tums for the tummy. T-U-M-S. Bring relief quicker than you'd ever guess. Best for any kind of acid distress. Keep them handy in the pocket row. Keep your tummy under Tums control. No acid rebound with modern Tums. Get Tums, 10 cents. Three-roll pack a quarter. Or the new Tums six-roll pack with three metal carrier, 49 cents. Matt, you know that this is the first time we've had a chance to eat dinner quietly and quite a spell. Yeah, I guess it is. Do you ever think you'd like to be somewhere else? You know, just travel. Travel? Yeah. Places like... Philadelphia, Washington, Baltimore. Why would I want to be there? Well, I should think you'd like to see something besides Fort Dodge and Fort Wallace. 
Jane's Crossing and Fort Larned. <laughs> Prairie and Army camps get pretty dull, don't they? What would I do in Washington? Call on President Grant? <laughs> why not? You're a famous man. Oh, sure. I couldn't wear the clothes, that's why. Ah, uh, I bet you'd look handsome. Oh, dude it up like that? <laughs> Well, Bill Cody does real fine. Look, Kitty, I know what you're after, but uh, I'm not going anywhere. I would. If I had anyone to go with. Uh, you'd be safe enough traveling by yourself. Well, now, that isn't what I meant. I know what you meant. You want an excuse to go, and uh, you'd like for me to chaperone you. <laughs> That's it, isn't it? <laughs> Matt, you haven't had a vacation in years. And besides, there... Uh... Are worse things than being my escort? <laughs> yeah, I guess there are. <laughs> well, I knew it wouldn't last. What? Huh? Oh, what you doing, Miss Kitty? Oh. Sit down, Chester. Oh, thank you. You all finished eating? It uh, looks that way, doesn't it, Chester? Had stew, huh? Mm, and it was good. Antelope or rabbit? Antelope. With potatoes and dried apples? Oh, apple? Chester, either order it or stop talking about it. I just finished a big meal, and I don't even want to think about foods. <laughs> I just said, too, Mr. Dillon. With Mr. Hightower down at the depot. That's fine. Buffalo steak. That's fine. You know, Mr. Dillon, I sure do wish I was going to Wichita on the train. Oh, uh, everybody wants to go somewhere. What? Matt's been out to you all during dinner. Never mind him. Now, why do you want to go to Wichita? Well, Mr. Hightower was telling me about them new cars that are going to start running. Do you know you can eat right there on the train, right while you're moving along? Now, what's that got to do with Wichita? Well, that's where the cars is going to run to. Oh, I see. And then there's this fellow right there in Wichita that's got a place you can eat right spang in the railroad depot. That sounds pretty fancy. Mr. Hightower says this fellow's going to have them all over the country before he's through. There you see, Matt. Travel wouldn't be so rough after all. <laughs> Not for Chester, anyway. Food before he starts, while he travels, and more when he gets there. Oh. <laughs> Where are you going to go, Mr. Dillon? I'm not going anywhere, Chester. Oh. Oh, say, I, I near forgot. There's somebody waiting in the office to see you. I seen him when I come by. Oh, uh, who? That Mr. Guthrie that got that big spread out north of Ford County. Did he say what he wanted? Oh, she didn't, except he wants to see you. Oh, you'll tell him I'll be along in a few minutes, huh? Yes, sir, I'll go to him right now. Well, we almost made it, Matt. What, Kitty? Well, I thought for once we'd get clean through a meal without you being hauled away. Oh, we did pretty good. I might have weakened, you know. I might have agreed to take a train somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'll walk you back. No, thanks, Matt. I'll just sit here and finish my coffee. Okay, I'll see you later. I tell you, he's a bad marshal. Maybe so, Mr. Guthrie. Uh, now, just think of that. Webb Edmonds killing them cold. Now, we're not sure about that, Chester. You have any proof it's Webb and not a wolf killing your stock? Well, I don't need no proof. Marshal, you just you go take one look at that half breed there in his stinking dugout. You you'll see what he is. Now look, Guthrie, just because a man doesn't keep clean or live in a house, that doesn't make him a killer. But this man is, Marshal. You can see it right in his eyes. They're they're, they're cold, they're they're wide open, it's like a snake's. You think you're just looking to measure you for your grave? I need proof, Mr. Guthrie. Now, unless you can prove that Wibb has broken some law, there's nothing I can do. Well, you can run them off of my land. You're using that land, Guthrie, but it's not yours. It's open range. And Wibb has every right to camp there if he wants to. I'm warning you, Marshal. You better run him off before there's trouble. And if you're thinking of getting up a party to run it him off... It ain't that, Marshal. You can bet my neighbors would be glad to cooperate. They've been losing stock, too. Well, everybody had, Mr. Guthrie. It's been an awful bad year for wool. You ought to thank Webb for cutting your losses. All right. All right. But it'll be on your head, Marshal. Don't say I didn't warn you. About what, Guthrie? That man hates me, Marshal. He's threatened me. He even said it was just as easy to kill a man as a wolf. Now, you think I'm going to wait for that half-breed to come shoot me in the back? 
That's murder you're talking about, Mr. Guthrie. I'm talking about self-protection, Marshal. Now, if you don't want trouble, you get him off my land. Reason or no reason, just get him off. Now, there's a riled-up man, Mr. Young. He might just do it. Yeah, he might. Say, uh, is it really true about Will being part shine? Well, I know he doesn't look at Chester, but it's true. He lived with him until he was about 20. Maybe he should have stayed with him. Well, any man wants to get back to his own people. You ask me, Will Edmonds don't quite fit in with any people, white or Indian. Well, I'll admit being a wolfer isn't a very fancy way to make a living, no matter what, man. Anyway, we better ride out and have a talk with him. In this weather? Or would you rather wait till somebody's murdered, Chester? All right, come on. Have to ride up along here, Mr. Dillon. Down in the draw, we'd at least be out of the wind. It's harder on the horses down there, Chester. The snow's a lot deeper. Well, that's so. And I guess we can see further up here, too. Not that there's anything to see. I'll bet we've missed his dugout already. I don't think so. But we've come off a long ways. That old got the shore claims a parcel of land, don't he? Yeah. Now, look there. Well, it's a horse. It's a colt. Sure standing funny, ain't it? It's staked out, Chester. Staked out? Out here in this weather, whatever for? Bait. Wolf bait. Oh, my goodness, that poor critter. Get out, Chester. <laughs> Whip! Hold your fire. It's Marshal Dillon. Now, you put down that rifle and show yourself. We're coming to talk to you. You hear me? I hear you. You stay away from that horse of mine, Marshal. Why? You spoiled my trap. You ain't no rain. I don't see no trap. Take one there all the same. All right. Come on, Chester. So you tried to shoot us, huh? Well, I'd only warn it. If I'd wanted to down you, I could have easy enough. If man smell around a trap, it's poison. Well, you don't have much trouble with that, do you, Wib? That may be, Chester. I don't care much for man smell myself nowadays. I didn't ask you to come here. We came to talk to you, Wib. You can talk. That's all. Dugouts over the crest. Follow me. You gonna leave that poor colt tied up to get at? He won't get hurt if the trap works. You can uh, sit on a log there. I'm outfitted for socializing. Now, this will do fine. This, uh, this coffee. Meat in the pot, if you want it. Well, say I don't... Muskrat meat. Muskrat meat. Uh, coffee, Mr. Dunn? Yeah, thanks, Chester. Well, speak your piece, Marshal. I can tell you right now, I ain't leaving. You're off Guthrie's payroll, Webb. You won't get anything more from him. I want nothing from him. Well, then why stay here? There are plenty of other ranchers that pay you to hunt wolves. Well? You're doing the talking, Marshal. I'm only trying to find out why you want to stay in this place. That wouldn't be that you're planning to get Guthrie with it. You think I killed his colts, Marshal? You got one of them out there right now for bait. It's different. It's different. The only thing that'll tempt this Bigfoot wolf. Is that the wolf you told Guthrie about? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to take him this time, Marshal. If you didn't spoil the trap, I... Webb, 
Are you sure that's the only reason you want to stay? I got to finish what I started. I got to get that big wolf, Marshal. And Guthrie better hadn't tried to stop me neither. You mean you'd kill a man just because of a wolf? This one is different. He's white and big. I don't care how big or what color he is. He's not worth a human life. You, you don't understand. This one is special, Marshal. This is the most important wolf of my whole life. But why? He's... Well, he's white. That's why. Oh. Well, isn't a white wolf big medicine to the Indians? I mean, aren't they superstitious, afraid to kill him? Huh? Look, Webb, maybe you've lived alone too long. Maybe you need a change. I'm all right, Marshal. I never thought things clearer. Any man needs to be around other men some. Maybe I got no use for men, Marshal. Sure, they got none for me. You don't give them much chance, Webb. Even before you became a wolfer, when you were killing buffalo, you wanted alone, always. Sure, I did. Maybe someday I'll tell you why, Marshal. But right now, all I got to say is I ain't leaving here. And if you stay, there'll be a killing. Now, we'll spend the night here, Webb. And in the morning, you're coming back to Dodge with us. I just closed my eyes for a minute, and when I looked up, he was gone. Well, when was this? Just a couple of minutes ago. I, I didn't fall asleep. I swear I didn't. He just slipped out. Like all right, I... all right, all right, Chester. I don't know. Maybe you should have took both watches, Mr. Dillon. It's all right. He can't have gotten too far. Well, there's our horses. At least he didn't take them. Wait a minute. You just take it easy, boy. Oh, take it easy. Half to death. Now that's it, a wolf. Come on, Chester. Where are we going? You just follow me. Shouldn't be too hard to spot, Webb. This moonlight on the snow makes it most as bright as day. Uh, you just be quiet, though. trying to jump out. So he might have near made it, too. Come on, let's move up closer. Look, there's a red edge of it there. But he's got a rifle. Why doesn't he use it? Look at that animal jump he's got. Shoot him, Webb. Shoot him. Oh, he's just standing there. What's the matter with you? Shoot him. You got a rifle. Use it. Now, we should have brought ours. He's out. The wolf's got him. Stay back, Chester. I'm going over there with a six-gun. You got him, Mr. Dillon. He's down for good. Yeah. And so's Webb. My goodness, he's bleeding like a stuck hog. Webb. Webb. Yeah. It's all over. I killed him. Well, then, Mr. Dillon, that wolf tore him up something fierce. Yeah. I'm done for a marshal. Why didn't you shoot him, Webb? You were standing right there with your rifle. White. Wolf. 
big medicine. Well, what did that have to do with it? Twenty years with Cheyenne. Tried to go back being a white man. Never could. Stayed on here to kill the white wolf. You mean you wanted to kill that wolf to prove to yourself that you'd stop thinking like an Indian? Miss Cheyenne never killed a white wolf. The white wolf is strong medicine. I couldn't shoot. I couldn't act like a white man. Poor devil. Chester, you remember how you said Wib didn't fit in with any people, white or Indian? Well, uh, well, then, I didn't know what he was up against, Mr. Dunn. No. Well, he didn't fit in then. Not until tonight he didn't. What do you mean? Tonight he found his people. Wib was born with Cheyenne. Tonight he died like a Cheyenne. More families, far more families, use X-Lax than any other laxative. In fact, today, many doctors recommend trusted X-Lax for youngsters as well as adults. X-Lax is the preferred laxative for one important reason. X-Lax helps you toward your normal regularity, gently, overnight. You see, X-Lax gives you the relief you want the gentle way that nature wants, without upset, without discomfort. When you take chocolated X-Lax at night, it does not disturb your sleep. And X-Lax is so effective that the next morning you'll be well on your way toward your normal regularity. Seldom, if ever, will you need X-Lax the next day. Little wonder that of all the laxatives made today, tablet, powder, or liquid, X-Lax is the most popular. So the next time, any time that you or any member of your family needs a laxative, make that laxative pleasant-tasting chocolated X-Lax. Introductory size, only 15 cents. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. This is Ed Murrow. This is Eric Severide in Washington. This is Robert Trout in New York. This is Blair Clark of CBS News in New York with The World Tonight. That's the news. This is Dallas Townsend in New York. Those are just a few of the voices that bring you the news each day on WBT Radio. You've learned to depend on those men for not only the important facts in a news story, but also a penetrating analysis of those facts. CBS correspondents are stationed throughout the globe to present first-hand reports of national and international developments as they happen. WBT reporters, with tape recorders, mobile news studios, and other news facilities, maintain a constant watch on the Carolina scene. It's an unbeatable combination, and it makes you, a WBT listener, the best informed radio listener in the world. Keep tab on the times at 1110 on your dial, WBT Charlotte.